All right, well, hello everybody and welcome back up into the bear's den for the beginning of this week's gardening update where there's good news, bad news, and just plain stuff that needs to be done. On the good news front, which is where we are absolutely going to start things, I do have some sprouts from the uh, seeds that JR sent me, so that's really exciting. We'll start looking at the arrow garden, and I guess we'll just kind of move our way along, because I also want to move that Sansi 70 watt LED light downstairs, where hopefully it can uh, power up the aquaponic garden for us as far as fake sun goes, and with a little bit of good luck, maybe we'll get rid of that hum that seems to be coming from the fluorescent lights. Let's get started looking at plants though. So starting first here in the world of good news, we have a couple of those chocolate reapers that have sprouted up. This one, hopefully you can see, I'm just kind of delicately trying to pull that seed casing off of there. We'll let it do its thing. In the middle here, we've got a lot of those MA faces that have come up. I see three, I think, that uh, haven't so far. This one... Kind of looks like it might have tried and died. This one in the back was that cut open and is a very suspicious looking one anyway. And I don't know what happened there. But on the outside, we've got two of the Trinidad bean. I wasn't quite careful enough with this one in the corner trying to pull the seed head off of that. So I did lose a lot of those initial leaves. I'm hoping it can still come back from that. But realistically, I don't think that's gonna happen. The number of MA faces seeds that came out and sprouted though, that's absolutely fantastic. I'm glad to see at least a couple of these reapers. I've got more seeds so I can do a, a replanting there if necessary. But because they are super hot, I'm not going to give up just yet. It's only been, what, two weeks? I mean, this says 10 days planted, so... I think it had a power outage problem though because it used to say a couple hundred days and I was kind of trying to track that. Anyway, so that is the good news with peppers so far up in the bear's den. Now, let's look at the other arrow garden and I'll show you the bad news. So the bad news is that the arrow garden full grow pepper project is a no-go because these seed pods seem to have come with aphids. Now, I know, considering my past, it seems a little unfair to blame the seeds, but I have thoroughly checked every other plant and seed start in this room, and I don't see a single aphid. So this whole arrow garden is now moving downstairs because I don't want these three plants to infest the rest of the room, and you know, let my negative experience with the arrow garden be a positive experience for the goldfish. I'm sure they will be very happy to get back into their uh, seasonal consumption of aphids. Very disappointed though. And uh, this garden, I'm probably going to pull these three plants out, put them into solo cups so it's a lot easier to brush the pepper or the aphids into the fish tank because you know, pulling them out from here, not great. I'm trying not to jostle that too much because I don't want to drop aphids anywhere else. Um, and then, yeah, this thing is going to get a cotton swab, rubbing alcohol, complete and total wipe down. And then I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. I might let it sit somewhere for a while. And uh, hopefully anything that might still be living on it will, will die off. I might just try and grow some things downstairs and get some starts with it there because if they are infested with aphids, as these ones are, like I said, at least there's fish food. So let's take a look what else we've got growing on down here. I'm trying to move around the tripod and yet move it with me. So I've got the mic and, oh, things are getting complicated. Looking at last year's orange habanero here, it's, uh, not completely dead. We can see a few little flower starts that are kind of struggling there. Hopefully I can keep this going for a few more months. The Venus flytrap is looking rough. This is what they generally look like when I have them around. But if we look really carefully, the end of my finger there, you can see there's a, a new leaf with a new trap forming. Just kind of in the back there, we can see another one that's trying to form a new trap. So hopefully it's not completely dead. Just Mostly dead. The bootless scorpion. Troll, I did follow your advice and remove those peppers that were hanging on these two plants. Hopefully, hey, 
Now we've got a brand new one that formed back there. Fuzzy didn't even let me know about that. So that's interesting. I may, uh, I may just end up pulling that off a little early, so hopefully it can come back. Here is the bad brains that had a pepper on it. Looking really, really rough. But as Brother Troll pointed out to me, it kind of encourages uh, suicide mode in plants when they've got the fully seeded fruit on there. In the back, the Bula clamshell, just barely hanging on, but still alive. And up front, we've got the Trinidad scorpion, surprisingly looking like the best of those peppers at the moment. But as I said, when I went over all of these <laughs> and didn't notice that pepper pod, I didn't see any signs of aphids. So I think this area is still clear, AKA secure, we'll see. Here's the aloe with the oregano. These things are going just nuts. You can see it's sprawled out in the back there. So that's good, using up some more of the light. It looks like the aloe might finally be recovering from the uh, horrible transplant situation. So it kind of looks like there's some fresh growth in the middle. And while we've got some browning on this one tip here, it seems to have kind of stopped on the rest of them and maybe even be correcting itself a little bit. So hopefully I didn't completely kill that plant. Speaking of hopefully I didn't kill, here we've got the large bad brains still trucking right along, still putting out flowers for me, but not getting the best light from that Sansi 70 at the moment. So we're going to plug the 36 back in. It's a little bit more directional and we're going to take that 70 downstairs. All right, so here we are down in the basement looking at the aquaponic garden underneath the Sensi 70 watt LED. You can definitely tell where its main area of effect is, but we are getting some on the parsley. There's a little bit over on the drill and the, I think that's a coffee tree. We've got the lemon tree here. I had to put it pretty much at the rafters. I could lift it up a little bit, oh, lack of focus. I could lift it up a little bit more, but I'm not, not quite sure if I'm gonna do that or not. We shall see. Um, so it's not spreading out quite as much as I had hoped, right? Like a little more light on these parsley would be nice. The sage will definitely benefit from this. The mint will benefit from this. Hopefully the basil will. The oregano patch, I'm a little concerned about this still, right? Like we're seeing a lot of dying off in here. Excuse me, it may be time for me to check my pump and make sure that I'm actually filling this up all the way. I could have some blockage on the foam down there, which leads to changes I need to make to the system in general. And this time, this time is not looking good. Time is not on my side. The mint though, mint looks fantastic. Now hopefully we're not getting that annoying hum in this clip like normally we get from the aquaponic garden. The only hum that should be left should be the little air pump, so that's kind of bearable. Nice look in here at those forward sages. They're doing okay. Looking at the rear two. Kind of still looks like alive, kind of questionable there. The main one obviously doing just fine, but we're just gonna have to wait it out and see what happens there. See if we can peek over the garden because it's handheld at the moment. You can see the mouse melon down there, rocking it out. Punky was saying that that apparently grows itself a nice little rhizome that can be transplanted in, in the right conditions. It's kind of a perennial. You know, based on what we're seeing here, that kind of makes sense. The little bog mint down there beside it. There's no air that goes into the, at that thing. Nothing. It's just sitting in stagnant, dank, dirty fish water. When I clean out the filter, the water goes into there with from the nastiness and that mint is growing. That's amazing to me. And then I guess while we're still handheld, you can see that one spider plant off in the corner there. Trucking along, still surviving. It'll be happy to go back outside, I'm sure. But while we're down here, let's pan around some more. And the new look for the Darwin table, which still hasn't been moved because I've got a lot of changes I gotta make down here now. But anyway, the aphid infested arrow garden is now down here. It is surrounded by spider plants and I have never really seen too much infestation on spider plants. So I'm hoping that will help them kind of stay on the plants that are in here until, um, well, I can get around to putting them in solo cups so that I can feed the goldfish without mucking up their roots too bad. But odds are 
maybe if I put the roots into a solo cup or something for these first few goes, we might be able to get rid of them. I'd kind of like to keep this thing growing in the arrow garden so we can get the mini jalapenos and the little Thai peppers to produce from this, you know, but I really feel like it's just not going to work for me with this aphid situation. So there's a bummer in that somewhere. And I mean, that one in the back, let's try the zoom on this camera. Hopefully we don't get too many aphids. Um, I don't know if you can see that as well as I can, but that almost looks like it's trying to start a flower in there. So it wants to work for me. I'm just going to have to find a way to make it work. Looking over here at the pile of calanchos while we're on the Darwin table. That's uh, quite a heaping pile of calanchos. Like it's surviving. It's surviving. It's about the best that can be said for it though. So yeah, more changes to come down here apparently. And uh, a little better light for the spider plants. So they're not going to complain about that. Although look how parched that water is. Clearly need to water these plants. Gonna be curious. Hopefully we can continue. Hopefully we can keep the aphids contained to these three plants, and uh, hopefully moving this down here to the basement will uh, nip this in the butt, and we won't have an aphid situation developing upstairs in the bear's den where I have tried so hard to prevent this from happening. So yeah, on that note, I got a few things to figure out down here. Kel surprise, I've always got something I got to figure out down here. The uh, background lighting looks all right from that LED. It's spilling a lot of light to the side. I might make a curtain for that. We'll see. I've got a lot of that reflective foil stuff at work that I can grab whenever. And there's still a piece hanging on the wall that ain't doing anything anymore. So could you start with that? We'll see. All right. Anywho, that is the wrap up for today. Thank you for joining me as I deal with the... Uh, well, the onset of the Aphid Wars 2020. All right, I thought we were done that. But you know, I guess I guess nature's just trying to keep me on my toes because I thought I had it licked. So yeah, nobody licks mother nature but father time, I guess. All right, take care everybody. And uh, yeah, I will see you next week.